Hi guys, welcome back to the GC Motors YouTube channel. My name's Johnny. I'm Tom. And um, we're back with another video today. This time it's actually a suggestion from uh, one of our viewers from the last video. Yeah, we actually had three suggestions. Right. Which, yeah. So Bradley commented saying uh, he'd love to know the differences between some of the different Land Rovers or Range Rovers. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that ultimately is what we're doing today. Um, and then uh, another user, I can't remember his name now because my phone's just died. Um, <laughs> Wanted to know a little bit of background on GC Motors as well. Okay. Well, yeah. Do you want to start with a bit of background, really, on the on the business of GC Motors? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we've been in business for around 20 years. Um, we've been in the current site for a lot of years. Um, the new the current site's on Ripon Road, in Harrogate, um, and we sell anything really that sort of is a bit special. And that's probably the simplest way of describing what GC Motors are about. You know, but really, what sets us apart, I guess, is the fact that we own the stock yeah you know we've got um eight million pound of stock roughly at any one point in time that ownership of the stock gives that flexibility to you know really look after the customers what it also does is we've got the on-site body shop we've got the on-site service center so because it's our stock we can just demand that those cars are, are brought back to as best of retail standard that a used car can be i think that's the biggest thing that sets us apart really is our ability and flexibility to be able to do that for customers Look, I could talk about the business forever, and, uh, and I'm sure the people watching this don't want a full sales pitch. Um, but I think that just goes some way to answer who we are and, and what sets us apart. I think you know, Bradley's suggestion of a video on you know the differences between the Range Rovers is probably a little bit more interesting to watch. And you are the car nerd, so I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, so today we're really going to be looking at the differences between the two kind of top of the range Range Rover cars. So the Sport and the full fat Range Rover. So we'll start off with naturally the kind of the, the smaller of the two uh, is the Range Rover Sport. And the first thing that kind of strikes you when you're getting in this, it's it's still a Range Rover. It's it's not really, it's not a baby anymore. It's still, it's a big car. It's not too big, but you know, the, the, the way you feel when you're sat in it, the kind of the higher seat position, and it's just, just something about Range Rover as well. It's just a little elevated, bit special. Though, yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah, it's definitely got that feel. Like, I feel like the boy driving this. I'm not going to lie. I mean... I would say you are the boy, mate. Well, well, flattery will get you nowhere, Tom. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, this this particular car, it's finished in Santorini black. Uh, and it's we've put these 23-inch Overfinch Orca upgrade alloy wheels on it that our guys in the workshop have actually done. And, mate, it just transforms this Aww, thing. It, it looked good when it came in. But with these, it's yeah, it's, it's something else. You walk up to it and it's just a bit of a jaw dropper now, isn't it? With yeah. those wheels, you're just like, oh my god, what's so? Oh. Yeah, it looks proper. Just the way they feel the arches and the way it stands as well. It just, yeah. yeah, it looks great. And again, Commands against, it, doesn't it? yeah, yeah, with the with the black paintwork and the kind of black exterior details, this car, yeah, it's it looks good. Yeah, so this particular car, it's got the three liter SDV6, which is the most popular engine really in the Range Rovers, particularly the Sport. Um, really good engine, it's nice and smooth. For a diesel, it's, you know, you don't, you're not hearing it. Obviously you've got nice sound deadening and stuff in here. It doesn't have to be silent though. So it's got full Meridian uh, surround sound system, which again, sounds really good when you've got the tunes on. We're not gonna do that on the video for copyright reasons, obviously. But you know, when I'm pretending to be gangster, driving around in the blacked out Range Rover, with, it, with a bit of radio one extra on, it uh, sounds pretty good. You've only literally got radio two in your repertoire. Oh, I, don't, I, really I don't think I've the, ever heard radio one extra. Yeah, I think you, if it's not the Bee Gees, you ain't listening. The one thing I notice, I'm not look. You are the car nerd. Um, but the one thing I do is the build quality inside. It's just everything is meticulous, like the stitching, the. The, the detailing, the heated steering wheel, you know, the, the, the little, I'm a techno, like, I absolutely love like the fact it's got lane keep assist and all those little mm. bits. And then it's the comfort of the seats. Like, I could, I literally feel like I want this as my office chair. Uh, yeah, so just on interior, obviously, you mentioned the high quality and it, it really does feel like that. I and mean, that's the thing, the one area that you notice between the two cars is the full fat Range Rover, as you will notice when we get into it. It's just those slight little extra details. So the steering wheel on this, um, it's a kind of a, like a nice, it's plastic, it's nice though, it's kind of soft touch plastic, but in the range of fully trimmed leather and a few little bits as well, like the kind of the trim stuff like that. But you know, it's, it's an expensive car at the end of the day, so it still really does feel like an expensive car. You say this is the baby Range Rover, mm -hmm. how much babier is it? 
Yeah, so in the, main, the main dimension is length, so it's 150 mil shorter than a full fat Range Rover, which, you know, if you're living in the city and you're driving in the city a lot, you do notice that. So it's kind of in and out of parking spaces, kind of multi-story car parks, stuff like that. It's, it is nice to have that little bit of space, you know, yeah. in the traffic and narrower lanes and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's 15 centimetres shorter. Obviously, if you're going to get the long wheelbase full fat Range Rover, that's 200 mil longer than the normal Range Rover. But you obviously, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. If you're buying that, so you're going to be aware of that. All that being said though, you know, yes it is a little bit short, but it's still yeah. not, you know, it's still practical. It's got 522 cubic litres of, of space with the seats up, yeah. and 1600 with the seat, the seat down. Yeah. I mean, you're fitting a Christmas tree in. Definitely fitting a Christmas tree in. And to be fair, with something like this, you get into the place where you need to cut the Christmas tree <laughs> down, not like illegal logging's like really bad. But, yeah, it's a capable off road. I mean, for a long time, the Range Rover Sport was actually Range Rover's, uh, Land Rover's most capable off roader. It's a fun little fact for you there. Obviously, they made the Defender for years, but by the time they introduced, I think it was this model. So it's the, oh, I can't remember the chassis code for this. So I'm going to get really oh, nerdy. I know the previous going, one was an L302, but I don't know deep. what this uh, chassis code is. But yeah, this was actually more capable than the Land Rover Defender gonna, was that they were making at the time. So. I'm going to guess that's with the right tyres. With the right tyres, yeah. But, I mean, it's got the air suspension though, so you can really lift it up. I mean, maybe maybe not on these 23-inch overfinch wheels, let's be honest. You've also got the adaptable drive mode, so, you know, if you're really getting into it, you've got your kind of desert mode and... Whoa, that literally has every sort of ground I've heard of. <laughs> like desert, ice, snow. Ice and snow seems similar. Um, I mean, that's useful though. That, yeah, is, that is genuinely useful, especially kind of how the weather's been recently. You've seen all those cars getting stranded. So yeah, it's something like that. It's, it does have its use. Well, 100%. So, and like, this is obviously a five seat car. Yeah. You can get a seven seat though. I was going to say, because I always think of Land Rovers, you can get a, a seven seat option. Yeah, so in, uh, in the Range Rover Sport, you can get those two kind of little back seats that flip up. Um, not, not huge, but definitely enough, enough room back there. Kind of two small adults or two kids, something like that. Um, but you can't actually get that on the full fat Range Rover of this generation, which is a bit a bit strange to be honest. The fact that you can get it in the smaller car, but not in the um, not in the bigger car. So that's a little chalk that one up to the Range Rover Sport there. Oh. I think of the, uh... oh. Yeah. So this car is a 2018 car, so it's got the really up to date face. It's really sleek and a bit more aerodynamic. Uh, and like I mentioned before, it's got the lovely black parts because the nice wheels on it. And I think with the right spec on these, they just look so good. I mean, this one, it's it's not got a crazy spec on it. Don't get me wrong. It's still fairly, it's like still relatively affordable for what it is. It was, what did you say it was? It was 59,990 for this one. 59,990. Obviously it's not cheap, but for a 2018 Range Rover in this condition, I think that's, that's pretty good. Where do I sign? <laughs> Yeah, so this has been the Range Rover Sport. Next up, we're going to jump in the, the full-size Range Rover and yeah, see what we think of that, see what the differences are from there. So if yeah. there's anything close to this, I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so we're in the, uh, the full-fat Range Rover now. So this one, it's an autobiography. It's got the 4.4 SDV8, which is a bit of a rare engine. To be honest, not that many people went for it. They either kind of went for the 5-litre petrol V8, kind of from the SVOs and SVs, stuff like that or the STV6 from the last car. So okay. a bit of a slightly rare beast, little thing for the nerds there. Again, you get a little bit more horsepower with this. It's 330 something horsepower, 34. I think this one, 334. So yeah, a yeah. little, bit, little bit more punch, but it is a bigger car. See, it's nice to have that little extra bit of power and it's got something like 540 odd pounds, some 500 plus pounds foot of torque. So plenty, it's got some it's proper got Plenty in the it. tank. Plenty in the tank, plenty of horses in the stables. <laughs> um, yeah, so first things you notice jumping into this thing from the Range Rover Sport. I thought the last one was lovely. Man. This is a different breed. It's, I feel like I'm on a yacht. <laughs> like the amount of like fine wood and fine leather. I feel like I should have taken my shoes off. <laughs> yeah, so this particular car, you've kind of got that. I'm not exactly sure what it's called, but that kind of light wood open pore trim throughout the whole car and it's, yeah, it's like something out of one of those Reva speedboats. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, you get a little bit more leather as well up here. You've got that extended leather. It's just really nice and soft. I mean, it's, it's never even somewhere you touch, but it's just, 
it's in your line of sight and it just looks plush. If I had this car, I would definitely be touching it. <laughs> Get your money's worth. <laughs> Again, the boss and the steering wheel, it's not the kind of plastic on the, as in the Range Rover Sport. You get this lovely, yeah, it's ivory leather. So you get ebony and ivory leather and you get the nice white, white leather on the steering wheel. Um, yeah, this black suede cloth uh, headlining as well. Again, it's you never, you never really, it's not something you ever notice on a car until it's there and it's got something yeah. that's really nice. Just an extra feature, obviously up above this one you also get the sliding pan roof rather okay. than just the kind of fixed pan roof. So if you want that li little extra bit of uh, outside, inside, you can kind of open bit that up, bit of breeze, indoor. bit of outdoor, indoor, yeah, lovely. Um, what else has it got? So, it, oh, the seats as well. So underneath it, I noticed that getting in. It is unbelievable. I've just found something, my new favourite toy. If you press this button here, mm. full blown massage. Oh. I am just having a back rub. I mean, you'd have, to, you'd have to pay for that at the spa, wouldn't you? I know. And if anything, it's less awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I like the wind head, wind, wind headrest as yeah. well. Just gives you that little bit of extra love to the head. Yeah, it's nice, soft and plush, and obviously full adjustability with the seats as well. They're actually 24 way of these, so you've got all your controls down here to your right. Nice and accessible. They're nicely finished. Obviously on the Sport, they're kind of down the side of the seat. Here, they're just right here, really easy to get to. Up front and centre. Um, front and centre, yeah. And they, the climate seats as well, front and rear. So not just heated, you also kind of, for those really hot days, say you park your car in the sun, you just get that little extra bit of, uh, bit of cooling if needs be. I hope you're not switching my seat to climate. I am, I want to see how cold it gets. <laughs> you don't want to know, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so this car is, is it Corinthian grey? Yeah, so this car, yeah, it's uh, on the outside, it's Carpathian grey. Carp is yeah. it? Yeah, Carpathian. They, they were famous for liking their colour grey. Oh, they, they loved a premium palette Range Rover <laughs> colour. Yeah, so it's actually a cost uh, cost option colour. Chorus grey came as standard. Uh, Chorus grey is slightly lighter, so this is just a slightly deeper uh, grey, and it, it looks really good, it looks smart, doesn't oh, it? It's very, very regal, very regal, this car. Again, though, we put the upgrade wheels on this, and it really sets it apart. It yeah. just brings it to life a little bit more. Yeah, it's got 23, 23, yeah, 23 yeah. inch projects alloys. They're just, they're, yeah, it's just set it by. It's something a bit different. So, yeah, fun little bit of trivia actually. All the Range Rover colours, the names all come from places. So, Carpathia, obviously, it's a mountain range in kind of central and eastern Europe through Romania and all those places. You are literally the fountain of useless knowledge. It goes deeper. Oh, God. Chorus is actually a little village in Wales, kind of like mid Wales, uh, and it's known for slate mining. That's that's why the village was there, it was in one of the old slate mining villages, hence Chorus. This is kind of slate grey, this car. Oh, and nice. the reason I know that, I've not had to Google that. I've actually spent quite a lot of time as a child in Chorus. So if you can guess why, it's train related. Uh, then yeah, there you go. Yeah, so this car, it's five seats, as all the Range Rovers are of this generation. Um, you've actually got the executive rear seat, so what you lose from that is actually you don't get the 60-40 split fold for the rear seats, but you do get all the kind of adjustability, so there's so many controls, actually memory climate rear seats, um, kind of as they are in the front, so you get all that adjustability. It's, it just makes a nice difference for passengers, because that's the thing, with a Sport, you're not, it's, it's definitely a car to drive. Yeah, I yeah. think, obviously, like we said, it's a slightly smaller car, a little bit sportier, kind of when you're driving it, it's it's the one to drive. This is it's lovely to drive and waft around in, don't get me wrong, it's, it's brilliant for that, but also it's great to sign and be driven in yeah. as well. So you get that, that's why you get all those features in the back on these. I, I actually I'm, I think we should pull over on getting to the back. A lot of talk of um, you know being the passenger in this car. I had to just try it for myself, Jeeves. Um, it is definitely a car to be driven in. Yeah? It's, I've, Go on, what's it like back there? What have you got? I, I've got heated seats. I can move my seat about. I've got more leg room than I know what to do with. I said on the last bit that like it was as big as my flat in the back. This is like a two-story house. Got cool seats as well, Tom, in case you fancy that. It, it's too cold. Not today. It is absolutely spectacular in the back of here. Um, I quite want you to just drive me about. <laughs> um, you know, you've got the wing headrest again if you want a nap, you can get a little bit of neck support. Um, it's just a beautiful place to be. Yeah, so how are you for legroom by the way? You're about what, you're six, six foot or something like that? I'm just over six foot. Just over six foot. If I'm honest, right now how I've been sat here, it's not it's not the greatest. However, I just press this little button here with an air. I can move the seat forward. 
Oh, the passenger seat. Uh, yeah, it's oh, now, brilliant. I, I feel like I could have a game of football in the back now. <laughs> like, it's huge. And then, you know... You could invite some of the footballers to drive the Range Rover Sports. Yeah, that's true. You know, get, get Ferdinand in the back. <laughs> that sounds really bad. Um, <laughs> yeah, so just driving through these kind of twisty little Yorkshire lanes here, it does feel like a big car when this car's coming the other way and you've got a dry stone wall on the left of you, it does feel quite big. But honestly, into the corners, for what's essentially nearly a three-ton car, it, it feels quite responsive and it feels quite sharp, it's all not, things considered, obviously. It's not as wallowy as I think I thought it was going to be. No. And in the back, I'm not getting thrown about. I could, I could usually drink my like, cappuccino and <laughs> read my you know big, large sheet paper and things like that. Broadsheet or whatever they're called. It tells, I'm a Daily Mail reader. Um, you know, it, it, it feels planted. Mm. beauty of us being a used car dealership essentially is that you don't have to take that initial hit of depreciation that's something Range Rovers are known quite well for it's just that first hit once you drive them off the forecourt so this one like I said it would have been well over 100 grand with all these options on we're selling for 85,990 uh, so that's yeah obviously it's, it's, a, it's a lot of money but it's you know it's a it's a it's a really high-end car and it's really expensive and you, you feel all that money so, yeah, so in conclusion, really, I mean, the fundamental differences between the cars, as we kind of gone through earlier, is the size. This one here is bigger. You get more space as a result of that and a little bit more road presence. And if you like the way kind of a big car looks and, and sits in your driveway, then obviously this one. Um, and you get the practicality of the, the sport being a bit smaller, so it's kind of a bit more manoeuvrable. Um, obviously this one as well, you get that added luxury, the kind of attention to detail with the leather trim and the wood trim and the kind of... The I mean, control panels, all that kind of stuff. Beautiful. It is, yeah, that's definitely something you really notice. And that's probably the key thing that I noticed between the two cars yeah. um, was that kind of attention to detail, really. Yeah, so, gorgeous. Uh, so I guess the ultimate question is which one would you choose? It's this one. It's the full size Range Rover for me. It has to be. It has to be. I mean, these are lovely, and they are both lovely, but for me, yeah. just to be controversial, um, I'd probably go for the Sport. Right. I like the size. Mm -hmm. This is very big, very grand. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a terrible driver. <laughs> um, I can just see me scraping my 22, 23 23s, inch. 23s, yeah. 23 Put inch up, yeah. uh, down the curb. Uh, um, but, you know, you, what you get in this is, is that luxury. It's very grand. Definitely. You are very grand. I think that's, that, well, delusions of grandeur perhaps, but I think that's what's drawn this to me. I love the presence of it. There's just something about it when you pull up. It's like when you see the Royal Procession on the TV, Range Rovers. There's just something about a full-size autobiography that's just like, just does it for me. And like I said, those extra details as well. There's just, yeah, I really appreciate them. I kind of all the leather and stuff like that. I think, yeah, it would, it would have to be this for me. I mean, personally, it's out of my price range. I think they both are. But, you know, wishful thinking, definitely the full-size Range Rover for me. I guess ultimately, it's, it's up to the people who are viewing it. Let us know what you think. Definitely. Like I say, they both have the saving graces, so... Yeah, let us know in your comments, you know. Tell us what, which one you prefer, which one you'd have. Um, yeah, it's been a cracking little day out, really, hasn't it? Yeah, I've enjoyed this. It's nice being, uh, yeah, being out in these cars and enjoying the Yorkshire Lane, so... Yeah, like we said last time, any kind of other suggestions? Obviously, this was a this was a, um, a viewer suggestion to do this video. So anything that you kind of want to know, obviously we've got access to kind of all the, the really wide range of stock that we have. And yeah, anything that you kind of really want to see from us, then let us know in the comments or Instagram messages, something like that. Yeah. Perfect. Look cool. forward to seeing you next time. Cheers. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. <laughs>